Now, the saturated fats are a problem, okay? And meat itself is a problem because it has saturated animal fat, which I just explained. It has trans fats, which really disrupt a lot of the function. And it has animal protein. So what's the problem with animal protein? Well, there's lots of problems with animal protein. First of all, animal protein in itself increases insulin resistance. That's a problem. Second thing about animal protein, it has leucine and methionine. Leucine actually kills the beta cells of the pancreas. You don't have that hardly at all in the vegan, vegan world, okay? So that's an important piece. Uh, it's in meat, okay? So animal protein also accelerates aging. We have a thing called the mTOR pathway. And um, leucine and methionine block, disrupt, overstimulate, different terms, the mTOR pathway. mTOR pathway is an anti-cancer and a longevity pathway. If you get more than 35 to 70 grams, you're out of the mTOR pathway. So somewhere between 35 to 70 grams of animal, uh, of protein period a day is, is what we need is to be optimal. That's less than a lot of people get. Okay, in addition, it has heme in it. And iron is an oxidant. Remember I told you, inflammation, oxidation, problem. So that's that chronic inflammation. It has ages, as I mentioned, advanced glycation end product, and these accelerate the whole diabetic process. So we actually, when we eat the meat, we're taking it into us and it adds to our ages load, which is a problem. Trans fats are a problem in general, also for diabetes. Now. Glycotoxin means ages. That's a different way of putting it. So it also increases the inflammatory markers. Those are measures of it, right? Tumor necrosis factor, C-reactive protein, uh, vascular adhesion molecules. Now, in, in, when I work with the diabetics, type 2, I will measure the C-reactive protein. It's an easy thing. We see in three weeks a 300% decrease in C-reactive protein. That means a decrease in your amount of inflammation. That's significant, okay? Uh, so we have to understand this driving inflammatory force that I talked about at the beginning. Meat contributes to it, and uh, the ages in the meat contributes to it. That's not all, okay? Uh, and I mentioned the mTOR pathway. But this is, a, again, significant. Again, so it's not just the animal fat, but it's the leucine that specifically kills the beta cells of the pancreas and disrupts the mTOR pathway. Um, now, a vegan diet, you gotta really have a what? Nine pounds of cabbage, 100 apples to get that amount of leucine. It's just not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna happen for most people. So, and I summarize this about animal fat, it, it kills the beta cells. Okay, when we de the research shows when you decrease the animal fat, you'll decrease insulin resistance, uh, and that's and you'll decrease insulin levels because you're no longer blocking the insulin metabolism. Okay, now there's a few more, but summing it up, we got animal fat destroys beta cells, particularly fish, increases insulin resistance, blocks insulin receptors on the cells. Uh, and inside the cells, blocks insulin signaling and, and blocks extra, extracellular signaling. So we got things that you've never heard of. Now, how many people have heard of what I'm talking about? Okay, a few of you. Well, that's great. But the point is, it's a big deal. So we have a problem. I'm going to mention one other thing. Estrogen increases the rate of diabetes. Insulin converts testosterone because it secretes, uh, it's connected to aromatase and it converts with aromatase testosterone to estrogen. So men with type 2 diabetes have a much higher estrogen. And part of the treatment is increase that, give them um, hor uh, herbs that increase their testosterone so we have the right testosterone estrogen balance. So women we have to worry about breast cancer and things like that but the point is Estrogen in meat 
definitely contributes to the diabetes. How, and there's a few pieces here. Uh, a low fiber diet, which is what meat is, okay, uh, in complex uh, with other factors, actually increases estrogen production by the bacteria in your gut. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So everything is uh, connected in a variety of ways. So estrogen is associated with higher rates of diabetes. Interestingly enough, vegan women have half the amount of estrogen in their, uh, in their feces excreting it and uh, have generally lower blood estrogen levels. That's a good thing because we're worrying about breast cancer and a few other things like that. But we are worried about diabetes. High estrogen is associated with uh, type 2 diabetes. And I, I just want to kind of keep that in mind for you. More so for men. So it's a big deal having that from the meat. Particularly the low fiber kind of high protein diet tends to stimulate the bacteria, gut bacteria, to, to, to also produce estrogen. Lots of things going on that way. Now, there are a variety of studies out there, and actually why I don't feel I need to do more studies, a lot of this work has been done. Uh, uh, my work was how to show how to heal, cure type 2 diabetes with a live food vegan diet, which is clearly shown. Other uh, studies support it somewhat. So, if you just do a good anti-diabetic diet, you get, and you're compliant, you're going to get 100% result in preventing diabetes. Curiously enough, if people just hear your advice and don't follow it, or follow it a little bit, you're going to get a 50% prevention. If you really don't change at all, then you're going to get a, a problem. You know, you're going to get your uh, diabetes. So, oops, pressed the wrong button, sorry about that. Okay, so I mentioned flat blocks the, creates insulin uh, resistance by blocking the GLUT4 receptor sites on the wall and inside. Um, and we come back to, don't think just sugar, think animal protein and fat. Animal fat first, animal protein second. So. We aren't just talking about calories when you talk about diabetes, because people focus on We are also talking about what the food is. Plant food is far more diabetic protective than animal uh, protein and fat. That's the point. That, that's where I'm getting to. So we've got to understand both levels. People still talking about calories. Yes, it's important. But if it's animal or plant care, calories, it's even more important. So this is an interesting study, and so I brought it in. This is designed so there's no weight loss. There's only one factor, and they clearly show a meat versus a vegan diet that the vegan diet was the best in preventing and reversing diabetes. And that was a very interesting study. Now, I, I mentioned that... Uh, the estrogen factor, I'm just repeating it because that's, I don't know, if, I'm curious. How many people are aware of the estrogen and diabetes thing? Okay, well, some of you are pretty good, but it's a problem. Animal tissues having lower fiber also contribute to lower, uh, to higher estrogen, and animal tissues have less antioxidant. In fact, it's more oxidative. That's a problem, okay? Um, and therefore, there's more inflammation from animal flesh. I mentioned the leucine methionine, I'm kind of reviewing it, but uh, what we see is the plant-based diets really are one healthier, but two, far more diabetes protective. Now, this is interesting. What they found is comparing pre-diabetics in the study, those who followed the vegan diet found it much easier and were more successful isn't that interesting? See, we're getting a little cheering from the back. Yes, yes, yes. You're telling the truth. Okay, I love it. Okay. 
But, but also, when they compared the diets, for the first three months, they were equal. But after three months, then the quality of life, well-being, was much higher with the, with the vegan diet. That's the key. Okay, the other thing is acidity plays a role. It increases the rate of diabetic diabetes by 56%. Okay? Um, now, I mentioned ages, so when it has to do with food preparation too. So if you bake it, process it, grill it, uh, you're going to increase the amount of ages in the food. Okay? And I mentioned free radicals. They are uh, an issue, particularly with the meat. Uh, but on plants, the antioxidants shoot up because plant food is very high in phytonutrients, antioxidants, and so forth. So that's another little uh, key. And plants boost our own ability to make antioxidants as well. So remember, the inflammation is a big deal. You see what I mean? And plant-based diet is far more anti-inflammatory. Um, Generally, plant-based diets with the five nutrients this is going to be healthier for you. Anybody ever heard of a lipotrope? It turns out that what lipotropes do is they actually help organs that are, have too much fat in them release the fat. It's a very, it's a new word. It took me a while to get that word straight. But lipotropes, which are in plants, actually uh, decrease the inflammation from the fat because it helps those organs let go of the fat in their system. Uh, it decreases the fat buildup. Okay. Um, so these are things to consider. I mentioned the fiber uh, and that certain gut bacteria can produce estrogens. So we have to eat in a way it doesn't do that. Okay, uh, so I mentioned vegetarian women have two to three times more estrogen in their feces, which means we're getting rid of estrogen better. That's partly because of the higher fiber diet. Okay, these are important kind of con subtle considerations. Okay, um, and so we get just much better results preventing and treating diabetes with a vegan diet. That's basically where it comes down to. Uh, plus we get less calories, okay? Um, so it's just a win, 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 win. Less heart disease, people who eat meat have significantly more. Uh, research shows that people who are vegan have about a third less heart disease, about 13% less cancers. There are all kinds of bonuses, but I'm trying to keep our focus primarily on the Diabetes part, couldn't help mention it though. Uh, so it's good for controlling weight. Definitely people on these uh, uh, diets do lose weight coming to their normal weight thing. We do increase cholesterol, we do decrease insulin. We increase insulin sensitivity and we have way less oxidative stress. These are real important issues of the overall feeling. So, and people like it. People feel better on this diet and they're more likely to stay with it. That was really interesting research. Um, as they did this randomly pre-diabetics to a plant-based, animal-based, they actually did better and liked it and were more successful on a plant-based diet. Okay, um, so that's the, kind of the key. Uh, and depression was less in people on a plant-based diet. Okay, so generally speaking, the more you're doing plant-based, the better.